good morning, church. Please turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 1. It's great to be with the Church of God in the morning, is it not? I am so proud of Casper Knockout Okiki. He just got himself a new nickname right there. He's not a boxer, he's a basketball player, but he is an absolute knockout. When was the last time you saw a 17-year-old preach their convictions at the pulpit? That's inspiring. That's inspiring. If my three-year-old son grows up to have convictions like my 17-year-old son, Casper, I'll be a very, very proud man. You did an incredible job, bro. Incredible job. Incredible job. I like how Casper spoke about the freedom to make mistakes. you got to have that freedom when you're in Christ. Because if you're afraid to fail, you'll never succeed. If you're afraid to fail, you'll never succeed. Casper spoke about, it's not about being perfect. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I love how this Holy Spirit always works through the speakers. I want to lift up Stuart with his debut contribution charge right there. I like Stuart. Stuart just got right to the heart of the matter. Stuart helped us understand that it's, it's not about how much you give. It's about how much you have left. That's contribution. It's not about how much you give. It's about how much you have left. I'm not trying to put any pressure on you as your preacher. I'm trying to put pressure in you. And it's awesome how the men of God that are speaking today are adopting that same heart that it's not about putting pressure on the church. It's putting pressure in the church. It's helping us to understand on a heart level why it is we do what we do. So that it's not only a few that are doing it. Now we don't want a church where only 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. We want a church where every single member is totally committed in their giving, in their evangelism, in their love, in their service, in their gratitude. Totally committed in every area of your life. You know, I had a jumper. It's getting chilly. I'm, I'm kind of jealous of Emmanuel. He went to Carhartt the other day and he bought himself a nice new Carhartt jumper. I was like, man, I feel like I want a Carhartt jumper. So I went to Carhartt and I saw the price tag. I said, I don't want a Carhartt jumper. I don't want that jumper. It's okay. Primani can do me just nicely. I'll, 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 get, I'll get my... So, so, so you know, you get, you get one of those jumpers and I realized my jumper was producing a lot of static electricity. And so I went back to Primani or, or Pennies, how they call it in, uh, in these ends, and I, and I tried to return my jumper, so they gave me one free of charge. As a joke, uh, as a joke about static electricity, free of charge. Yeah, Felipe, did you get it? Okay, cool. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a joke. That didn't actually happen. Free, free of charge? You got it? Okay, cool. Felipe, Philo gets it, so. Thank you, you're welcome. I went to the store to pick up eight cans of Sprite. Yeah, but when I got home, I realized I only picked up seven up. Yeah. Yeah, Trey told me to tell you that joke, so you can, you can thank him at the end. Why is a flower similar to the letter A? Because a B comes after it. Trey, Trey laughed at his own joke. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty sad, right? Psalm chapter 1. Say, so why, Luke, why are you making jokes about flowers? I mean, I, I, want, I, want, the, I want the church to be a little bit light-hearted. Because we're preaching a, a, a heavy, heavy charge today. The title is, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're not growing, you're dying. Just like that flower followed by a bee. If you don't see more petals on that flower... If you don't see more beauty growing out of the ground of that flower, you've got to wonder whether that flower is getting the right nutrients. If you see a tree and every year you go back to the tree, you see no fruit on that tree. You've got to wonder, is that tree even alive? If you saw my son next year and he stayed the same height, you would be concerned. If year on year your nanny with the cookies didn't say, you look so much bigger. That would be an issue. But she says it every year. Because she sees the growth. Why does she see the growth? Because you're alive. If you're not growing, you're dying. Who, who's got green fingers? Anyone's ever actually managed to grow a bonsai tree? 
Yeah, I. Uh, honey. Yeah, we. Yeah, exactly. It's not easy. We all think that house plants are this beautiful thing. We put these plants all over our house, and then a week later, they're dead. You get some flowers, you put them up in a nice vase, dead. Bonsai tree, dead. All these things, just, we're just not very good at keeping things alive. But we know on a very basic level, if this thing is not growing, it's dying. Me and Frankie, we got this gift from, from my uh, sister-in-law, and she bought us this beautiful little plant that sits on our mantelpiece. And it's growing, like a lot. I water it once a week. It's one of my chores that I do to make sure I get my pocket money. And I, uh, and I water this little plant, not really. Um, I water this little plant and it's growing uncontrollably. All these things are coming off, right? It's growing. But it's now growing to a point where me watering it Monday is not working anymore. It's growing to a point where it cannot fit in its pot and so some of the leaves are starting to die. And so growth is always kind of easy until it takes some maintenance. And I think we are good at growing to a certain level. But then when our growth actually requires consistent forethought. We stop growing. Yeah. And we fool ourselves into thinking that growth is accidental. It's never accidental. True. You can grow naturally mm -hmm. up till about 12 years old. Then you've got to start thinking about it. Yeah. If you want to grow emotionally, yeah. that's not going to happen by accident. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow spiritually, that's not going to happen by accident. Right. If you want to grow physically, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen by accident. If you want to grow mentally, that's not going to happen by accident. No growth is accidental. God wants us to grow. If you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. You know, you get all your advice from your worldly friends that don't really know anything about Jesus. That's not blessed. <laughs> he said, it does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. It's okay to have some wicked friends. You've got me as a friend. But you don't want their counsel. Or stand in the way of sinners. Or sit in the seat of mockers. Do you see the progression of sin here? They were walking in sin. Then standing in sin. Then sitting in sin. When you're walking, there's, there's a kind of an, an, an activeness to it. And then, and then you just kind of, have you ever been that guy just kind of standing around in sin? And should I, should I be here? Or should I not be here? And then you sit down. Game over. You found yourself comfortable amongst the ungodly. Walk, stand, sit. You know the word blessed is very interesting. It's the Hebrew word esher, but it comes from the root of the Hebrew word ashor, which means to lead or to make progress, to grow. And so if you are not growing, if you are not leading, if you are not blessed, you cannot be a leader in God's kingdom. Who wants to follow a grumpy guy that is not growing and has no ambition? And no, I know I can be a little bit strong sometimes. I know my ab ambition can make you go like this sometimes. But would you rather... Yeah, sorry, I know. Would you rather an ambitionless evangelist or an ambitious evangelist? You're going to be blessed if you want to lead. Because where are you leading people to? If you want to make progress that's going to lead to being blessed his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night do you have morning and evening quiet times i guarantee if you decide to read the scriptures every morning and every night and every night you know that same way you have a quiet time in the morning you open up you indulge one sister she described her quiet time to me the other day as indulgent i was like that is music to my ears to hear that you had an indulgent quiet time. I'm like, you go for it, my sister. That's awesome. Do you indulge in the Bible every morning and every evening? I, I refuse to believe that you could possibly be struggling if that is your lifestyle. That every morning you get soapy, every evening you get soapy. I refuse to believe that you could be struggling. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. God wants you to be like a tree. What do trees do? Grow. grow. And if you're not growing, you're dying. 
How much more so a tree planted by a stream who has an unlimited resource of nitrates, of sunshine, so it can photosynthesize all day long. It gets everything that it needs from that river, all the water flowing up the xylem, going on the phloem, all these kind of stuff that you forgot from biology in primary school. <laughs> Planted by the stream, an unlimited supply of growth. That's what God wants you to be like. Did you know that trees never stop growing? Mm, yeah. Trees never stop growing. Wow. Unless they're dying, of course. Trees never stop growing. They just go through different stages of growth. A tree can be growing in height, or it can be growing in depth, or it can be growing in width, or it can be growing fruit. Each one of these stages require a lot of energy from the tree, and so are somewhat mutually exclusive. There will be times in that tree's life where it is focusing on height, where it is trying to get to a different position. And we can do that as disciples. That's a good place to be. I want to be a Bible talk leader. I want to be an evangelist. I want to lead this group. I want to lead the AMS. I want to lift up Emmanuel for going, I want to lead the AMS. Emmanuel is trying to grow in height there. He's trying to grow in height. That's an admirable thing to do. And it requires energy to grow in height. But you know, once you've grown to a certain height, it is actually difficult for the nutrients to keep sending you upwards just because the gravitational pull. That's why you see most species of tree have a height limit, apart from the great sequoia that you see in California. They don't have a height limit. I don't really know why. You can research it for yourself. But most, most trees will have a height limit because they cannot force the nutrients up in that direction anymore because of the force of gravity. And so... There is a certain height that you can reach as a disciple before you start having to go deep. Some of us might be in that position. We've grown in height and now we are an intern in the kingdom of God. That's a great height to be at. You're receiving, as an intern, you receive more nutrients. That's why trees want to grow high because they want to see where the sunlight's at. They want to get all of that nice fresh oxygen, all that kind of good stuff, right? The carbon dioxide, they release oxygen. And so the interns, they get a lot of nutrients. They get discipling on Sunday. They get discipling at leaders meeting. They get discipling throughout the week because they get the honor to walk with an evangelist or a women's ministry leader. And so they get a lot of nutrients. And they say, so, so why am I not growing in height? Why am I not growing in fruitfulness? Because God is working on your depth. You may be right now at the, at the highest point you can be in this moment. And if you refuse the depth that God is trying to build in you, you won't get any higher. Imagine a tree only focused on height. Its roots would not be able to sustain that growth. And so the minute some wind comes, that tree is toppling right over. God may be trying to get deep with you. If you don't want to go deep as a disciple, you are limiting the other areas of growth. You, will not get high. you can't be an evangelist without going deep. You can't. You think you can draw out someone's heart without you having to go to the deep recesses of how broken you are as an individual. That's how you can draw out somebody's heart. You need to deal with your own demons if you're going to help cast out anyone else's. You've got to allow God to go deep on you. All those things that you don't want to deal with. All that stuff where you think it's useless to pray about, that's the stuff that God wants to dig out. Right. You know, you, we've got, we have those feelings sometimes. You're like, oh, what's the point in praying about this? It's in the past. And da, 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 da. Right. That's depth. God is trying to get your depth. Sometimes he's trying to deepen your Bible study. Maybe you've read the Bible already once. Maybe you've read this book. Read, how about some depth now? Come on. You've grown. Now you've got to get to the point where you're getting deeper. You're reading commentaries. You go into the original Greek. You go into the Hebrew. What does this word really mean? And you're trying to get deeper. That's someone who really wants to feed. What about width? What about width? That's when a tree has grown to the height that it needs to. It's grown to the depth that it needs to. But now it's surrounded by a lot of people. Now it, now it needs to grow in width. Width allows you to shelter a lot of people under that shade. Width gives you a larger reach to people of all different kinds. You need to grow if you want to be a white man helping black people. True. You've got to grow. Yeah. You've got to grow if you are a Nigerian dude and you want to help the Chinese get to heaven. You've got to grow. 
You think being stuck in your ways and I'm Irish and I'm Irish and everything's Irish is going to help you to save all nations? Heck no. You think that's going to work? You are not a Nigerian disciple. You are not an English disciple. You are not an Irish disciple. Your culture does not mean anything. Your passport is just a ticket to evangelize the world. That's it. That's it. You use your cultural background to be able to win people over. But if you are not able to be all things to all men, you're limiting your growth. I'm trying to get me all different kinds of food in this belly. I'm trying to know about every different cuisine. I'm trying to know about every different language. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to be everything to everyone. I don't want you to see my skin color. I want you to see my effort. That I'm trying to speak a little bit of Portuguese. I'm trying to speak a little bit of Mandarin. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get in there. I'm not going to do good, but you see my heart. I remember the first time I went to church, a guy came up to me and he was like so desperately trying to connect with me. And he was talking to me about video games, of which I had no interest. He was talking to me about football, of which I had no interest. But I had such a deep respect for his heart. He was just trying to connect. I was like, I like this guy. And so when I actually became open to studying the Bible, he was the guy that I called. Because even though I didn't, I didn't care about video games or football or any of this kind of stuff at all, at least he tried. And so I'm probably going to butcher your name. But I'm going to try. I don't think I've pronounced Neche's name correctly once. But she loves me. She loves me. She's going to go for it. She's like, okay, this is my father in the faith. Amen. <laughs> right? And she, and she goes for it. So width, you've got, to get, you've got to get some width. What different people can you save? What different people can you preach to? How much have you gone after knowing the culture of the people that God has allowed you to study the Bible with? We don't believe in black church, white church, yellow church. What is that? That is not in the Holy Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 28, go to all nations. Your church should look like the local supermarket. If you can be in a city as multicultural as Dublin, but when you go to church, you only see black people. Sorry, that's not the kingdom of God. You only see white people. Sorry, that is not the kingdom of God. You only see, now sorry, doesn't work like that. We are the Dublin International Christian Church. And then the fourth stage of growth that a tree might have is fruit. You might be, why, 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 can't, why can't I baptize anybody? Maybe God needs you to go deeper. No, oh, why, why can't I baptize anybody? Maybe God wants you to go wider. Why well, can't be fruit? Maybe God wants you to go higher. We get so focused on the fruit. You ever seen a tree finding it difficult to produce fruit? You ever seen a, a tree go, oh, apple. Yeah. Anyone want an apple? Oh, yeah, I got, got another one for you. There's another apple. You guys want an apple? <laughs> you know, I've never seen a tree struggling. Why? Trees make apples. Apple trees make apples. That's just what they do. Yeah. It's a natural byproduct of that tree growing. Right. If a tree is going high and deep and wide, it can only grow fruit. Mm. Being fruitful takes a lot of energy. A tree will stop its height growth, its depth growth, and its width growth in order to produce fruit. Sometimes, God, you feel like you have stopped growing, but what he's doing is sweetening you up. Fruit grows on a tree, but then it's got to focus all the nutrients to go towards that fruit so it ripens. God's trying to make you sweet. Maybe the reason why you've not been able to make a disciple because you're not sweet. You're bitter. You're not going to be able to help anyone get to the waters of baptism if you are a bitter, critical, unforgiving individual. How are you going to help anybody get to heaven? If you can't win your own brothers and sisters over. God's trying to make you sweet. But how do you know if you're in a fruitless season? Because sometimes totally ineffective disciples say, oh, you know, I think this is just a season of unfruitfulness and that's, that's why I'm not bearing fruit. Uh, no, you have no faith. How can you tell? Because you're not growing in any of the other areas. I believe a disciple who is growing in depth, height and width is absolutely going to be fruitful. Some of you are very worried about baptizing. I'm not worried about you because I see you growing in so many different areas. Yeah. But those of you who think you're in a fruitless season and the issue is this, that, and the other, sorry, you just have no faith. Because mm -hmm. you're not growing in depth. You're not growing in width. You're not growing in height. Nor are you growing in fruit. Mm -hmm. You might not be growing because you're dying. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter 1. Come on, Luke. Good stuff. 
Let's talk about growth today. I love growth. I'm passionate about growth. I never thought about, about it before becoming a disciple, but now it's something that I think about all the time. I'm not, not talking about numbers. I don't think church numbers are a difficult thing to get. I don't think growing the church numerically is very difficult. I think if I grow, the church grows. And if, I, if, I'm, if I'm focused on changing my heart, if you're focused on changing yours, there is no way that the church is not going to be fruitful. Show me a growing group of individuals and I'll show you a fruitful church. There's no way that a church can be fruitful and not growing on the inside. It's not possible. The Bible says in verse 8, For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind. And has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Now what's Peter talking about? If you look at verse 5, he says, For this reason make every effort to add to your faith. Add goodness. Add knowledge. Add self-control. Add perseverance. Add godliness. Add brotherly kindness. Add love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. Peter said, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you possess these in increasing measure, then you will be not ineffective and not unproductive. So what it means if you're not growing, you're ineffective and you're unproductive. You know, the ESV, which translates to Greek here, Argos and Akarpos, says useless and fruitless. It says if you are not trying to grow as a disciple, you're useless and fruitless. That's not me saying that. That's the Bible. I'm sorry if you don't like it. The Bible says Argos and Akapos, which means useless and fruitless. But luckily we can go from being useless to useful if we decide to grow. We can go from being unproductive to very fruitful if we decide to grow. It says, but if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind. That means he has no vision. And he's forgotten that he's been cleansed from his past sins. You're out of touch with the cross. If you're not growing, you become ungrateful and bitter. And you see everyone else growing around you. Instead of being fired up about their growth, they're just getting attention because they're... You're not standing like little sour grapes. You ever had them grapes from little probably? Because, you know, little... Little, they're either already moldy by the time you pay for them, yes. or you pick them up. That's, that's that face? You guys had that face? Yeah. yeah, yeah, me and Trey are Dunn's boys, so you know. I know. No vision, ungrateful and bitter. Is that where you're at? Are you growing? Verse 10. I like Peter, he uses these if, if sentences. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. You sure of your calling? You sure of your election? Well, are you growing? It says, if you do these things, you will never fall. Me and my wife had an awesome date last night with uh, Sean O'Farrell and Anna Cheesemore. It was awesome. It was awesome. It wasn't too much of a date, to be honest, because we just quickly put Finn to bed, and, and it was mostly just putting Finn to bed. <laughs> And then we say we cuddled the guinea pigs and we just had a, had a little catch up. We just had a little chat. And, and we spoke about something profound. We were spoken about our favorite dates and spoke about how me and Frankie kind of got together. And, and, and then I kind of shared something with them that resonates just with the scripture. And I, and I said to them, guys, the only thing that's really important is staying faithful. Yes. That's it. It doesn't matter if you're rocking it right now right. or you're absolutely blundering and whatever. All that matters is you stay faithful. The Bible says if you, if you just keep on trying to grow, you'll never fall. Never fall. Is your greatest fear falling? That's my greatest fear is falling away. My greatest fear. I'm not afraid of bugs. I'm not afraid of heights. Sometimes I don't like ladders. I'm not afraid of the ocean. Sometimes it gets pretty deep. What I'm afraid of is falling away. I never want to fall away. This is my worst nightmare. If I ever have a dream where I'm not a disciple, <laughs> like it's, it's freaky. You don't want that. 
I never want to fall away. And luckily, the Bible says I don't have to. All I've got to do is keep growing, because if you're not growing, you're dying. Thank you. If you're not growing, you're dying. How's your growth? First Timothy. Let's get into some points here. Point number one. If you're growing, it's showing. If you're growing, it's showing. You know, there comes a point in pregnancy when you can't hide that you're pregnant anymore. You can't hide it. You can't hide that baby bump. We thought there were like five kids inside Frankie's womb. Finn, Finn's a big boy. Frankie's, Frankie's belly just all of a sudden was like, whoa. I have a video of me and Frankie. We were practicing for ICCM and Frankie is like, she's carrying a beach ball. It's crazy. And we were like memorizing things for our, for our theology degree. It was crazy. And then Finn popped out and we were like, bro, yeah. He was just taking up space. He wasn't even that big when he was born. I think he was just starfishing in the womb, just having a great time. He was, he was trying to grow. He was like, I need some space. Maybe he had a twin. He was just like, can you get out? I need, I need, to, I need, some, I need some space here. You know, he's, and he's growing. He's growing. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 15, be diligent in these matters. You read the rest of the chapter to know the matters that matter. Give yourself wholly to them. So that everyone may see your progress. The Bible says that your growth should be visible in your heart. You know, because God, I know I've grown. You know, you may not see it. Because, you know, my disciple is so harsh on me. Oh, Lord. I got a disciple. Yeah. And my disciple is a hard man. <laughs> you know, that's how he feels. Oh, my disciple, he doesn't see my growth. Da, 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 da. But I know I've grown. I know I've grown. You know, all this kind of stuff. Don't we feel like that sometimes? No, wait, well, you know. So that the Lord may see your progress. Is that what it says? You know, God, yeah, God, see, God sees my struggle. And he sees how far I've come over these years, you know. I, this, this, this movie on Friday, man, it got to be, yeah. Can we go in? Is that what the Bible says? Who does the Bible say should be able to see your growth? Man. Man. Hold on a second. You guys want to know what everyone means in the Greek, right? <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Theology degree. <laughs> All right? Everyone needs to see your progress. Yeah. It's not enough for you to feel like you've grown. Mm -hmm. That is a terrible indicator. We're going to get to that in the second point. Because sometimes you feel like you haven't, but you totally have. True. God says the indicator is what everyone else sees. Not all growth is visible. Do you think you can see a tree growing under the ground? No. You probably can't even see it growing up just by standing there. Neither in width. You can see the fruit. Because all invisible growth leads to visible growth. You can tell me as much as you like, I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing. You just, you're just down on me. You just don't know my story. But your invisible growth will lead to visible growth. Right. So if there is no visible growth, don't expect us not to question the invisible growth. Mm. Are you growing or slowing? Mm. Are you growing or are you slowing? A growing disciple excels the growth of the church. A growing disciple excels the growth of the church. A stagnant disciple slows the growth of the church. You become a shenanigan. You guys know what a shenanigan is? That's something that takes up all of your valuable time. A shenanigan. Where our time should be spent out on the streets, but instead we're dealing with a brother who doesn't want to grow. Instead of having to deal with a sister, you're getting discipled on the same thing. And I'm not talking to saying, don't be patient, don't be loving. I'm not saying that. But you've been told 7,036 times that this is the issue and you're refusing to see it. Mm. That's a shenanigan. Mm. 
That's a shenanigan. Are you growing or slowing? You grow in the church or slow in the church? Everyone needs to see your progress. It's visible. I can see Sean's progress. Can you not? Can you not? We, we laugh about the fact that Sean used to look like John the Baptist. We laugh about that fact. But that's very visible evidence. That's very visible evidence. We laugh about it, but it's very visible evidence that he is impressionable. You say, bro, you're looking a little bit scruffy. Let's tighten up that beard. Let's get that haircut. And then in a month's time, when you have more faith, I'm going to take a couple more inches. And then I had a brother call me because he saw me studying the Bible with Sean. He's like, bro, he's got to cut that hair. And I said, I'm just waiting for him to have the faith. Don't, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get an inch, inch per month. And then he's going to be a, a sold out disciple right there. Right? I'm not saying that your haircut will stop you from getting to the heaven. It won't. What I'm saying is that the visible growth. That Sean is like, okay, let me, let me tighten up. Let me put on a suit. Let me, let me be serious about my walk with God. Right. You, Sean was not a suit guy before. True. He was a flip-flops, flannel shirt, and satchel guy. <laughs> He's still that guy yeah. on the inside. <laughs> but the visible growth, he understands the need for maturity, understands the need to carry himself in a godly way to get that respect to grow on the outside. I'm, I'm, in, I'm inspired seeing how Sean and Anna's relationship is growing. Can you not see how that is growing? It's awesome. It's awesome. These guys like each other. They, they like like each other. I don't, I don't want to make anyone feel embarrassed or nothing, but it was like me and Frankie didn't exist yesterday. They were, they were, they were, no, I'm kidding. That's fine. For Sean. Anna was trying to get into fellowship, but Sean, Sean was way more excited about what Anna had to share than what I had to share. That's what I'm saying. I'm, 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 sorry. I mean, I'm only kidding. He is. That's fine. But that's a growing relationship. And you see the fruits of it. It's called Amy, and she's sitting right in the middle of them right now. Right? That's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a relationship that produces fruit. That's awesome. I see Marine and Neche growing like nothing. I see them growing. And they, they're going after it. They, they're growing as individuals. Yes. They're growing. We bring a lot of stuff into the kingdom. We bring a lot of, a lot of things. Some trees got some, some parasites. Some, some trees got some wood lice. And some trees got all kinds of stuff. But, but when you're in the right environment, all those things get, get sorted out. And it's an awesome thing when, when a dating relationship exposes some demons that you've got. That's exactly what you thought it was supposed to be a happy, fun, skipping through the fields. No, you just wait until you get married. You think your demons are coming out now? Oh, oh baby. baby. That's with breaks in between called leaving in different houses. Right? Then you're going to see oh, yeah. Marine and Neche are growing. Yeah. It's inspiring to see. It's inspiring to see. I, I think Casper's growth is visible. Do you not think? I think it's visible. So we don't see the behind the scenes stuff to make people become disciples. I remember being on the phone. We were having house service in Port Monarch and Casper was down the phone saying, oh, I don't want to come. I don't want to be a disciple anymore. And I'm just there in the corner of the room. Like I'm, I'm about to start leaders meeting. I'm like, bro, get, get your head, get, get in the game. Bro. Get your head together. This is, you need to become a disciple. And he's going after it. We studied the kingdom of God study with his friend from school, John, on Friday. And you gotta, and you got to pray for John. I think John's going to make it. It's, got some, it's not easy to become a 17-year-old disciple. I think that's real, real manly. I think that's real manly. When all the rest of your friends are sitting on top of the bus smoking a vape. When all the rest of your friends are knee-deep in TikTok and pornography seven, eight hours a day. When all your friends are catching up with the latest trends, you just want to know Jesus? That's a real man. That's a real man. Casper has more character than, than most 40-year-olds that I know. The real man. Real man. I want to lift up someone I see, I see growing a lot. That's Mariana. That's Mariana. Mariana is, in, Mariana is growing in height. She's growing in depth. She's growing in width. She's, she's going to be fruitful too. She, her heart is changing. She's grown in humility. Yes. She's grown in gentleness. Yes. And she's growing in her relationship with God. Yes. And that's, that's invisible growth that leads to visible growth. Yeah. Because her prayer life 
is growing. Yeah. Because her love for the scriptures is growing. Yeah. It's leading to visible growth. That's very, very clear. And I'm excited, Mariana, for the day you get baptized. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Coming soon. It doesn't matter how bad or good you think you're doing. Are you growing? Casper told us, he said, guys, it's not about being perfect. Are you growing? You're going to be on top and you're going to be on bottom and you're going to be in both places again. That's just a fact of life. We're feeling, we're going to walk into the EMC feeling real good. You guys doubled the church this year. Well done. That's awesome growth. And so you're going to feel great about giving people advice about the cyber ministry. You're going to feel great about giving people advice about how to go on a mission team. And people will ask you. People will come, wow, you guys have been in Ireland for a year now. How was it when you started off? What was it like to live in a brother's household? And let me tell you some things that I learned about this. And, da -da 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 -da. and it's going to be awesome. You're on, you're on top. Praise God. You're going to be on bottom, though. Because nothing grows on the mountaintops. Things only grow in the valleys. And so you need to have those mountaintop experiences. That's an awesome place to be as a disciple, where God is really shining through the church. But it doesn't mean he's not shining when the church is not doing what it needs to be doing. It's God growing the depth of the church. I can is more important than IQ. I can is more important than IQ. Are you growing? It's not about how talented you are as a disciple. Your skills. Some of us think that the reason we're, we're not making disciples is because of our skills and this, that, and that. No, I can is more important than IQ. In fact, those of us that think we're the most skilled are probably going to end up being the most fruitless. Because we start relying on ourselves. And it's not by faith. Paul said to the Corinthians, God put us to the point where we even thought we were going to die so that we could rely on Him and not on ourselves. That's why. So those of you who are very skillful and have been around a while and are mature and know your stuff, God is going to blow your stuff so that you can actually do it with Him. Amen. Instead of giving growth a timeline, I want to challenge you to take away the finish line. Instead of giving growth a timeline, take away the finish line. Instead of asking, how long will it take? Ask, how far can I go? I think we give ourselves a growth finish line. Oh, when I've, got, when I've grown this high, this deep, this wide, this fruitful. And you know what happens? You baptize and then you disappear. Because your finish line was, I'm, I'm going to make a disciple. And what next? And what next? Think, don't think about how long will it take. Ask, how far can I go? You guys with me? Yeah. First John chapter 3. Let's get to the second point here. I'm passionate about growth. You guys are going to have to give me a T sign. First John chapter 3. Point number two. Growth is best when your heart's at rest. Growth is best when your heart's at rest. First John 3. Verse 18. Dear children. That's what you are. To me, to God. Let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. This is so convicting. This is 1 John chapter 3. It's a book right at the back of the Bible, not the Gospel of John. It says that our hearts condemn us. Our hearts condemn us. Since growth is a positive thing, but growing is a painful process, those who are growing the most can often feel like they're growing the least. Wow. Let me say that again. Since growth is a positive thing, but growing is a painful process. Those who are growing the most can often feel like they're growing the least. Wow. Growth is positive. And so we're like, man, if I'm growing, I should be feeling awesome about it. But growing pains are a legit thing. Yes. Yes. They are a legit thing. 
So how do we know if we're actually growing or not? It's not about what our heart is saying to us. Your heart today might tell you, yeah, I'm growing loads. But where are your actions and truth? Your heart, and I think this is the majority of the church, because I'm very proud of you guys. You're going after it. I think the majority of us feel like we're not growing. So it's not about the word of tongue, but with actions and in truth. God is greater than your heart. So you not feeling like you're growing is not an issue. It's not an issue. Whether Satan is accusing you or you just have an overactive guilty conscience, the solution is the same. What are my actions and what is the truth? I want to lift up Philo Bruni. It's his birthday today. He's 25 years old. Now, Philo's, Philo's a boxer. But he's, he's getting the one-two punch at the moment. One punch is coming from the devil. An accusation saying, you're not growing. And one punch is coming from himself. From an overactive, guilty conscience. But the solution is the same. What are my actions and what is the truth? And you can ask Philo in the fellowship. He's only been studying the Bible for, what, about a month now maybe? But his change has been unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. Every time he comes up to me, he's like, bro, I don't think I can do this. And it's like, remember that's what you said about that? And you've done it? That's what you said about that and you did it? That's what you said about that. The first time Philo came up to us um, when we did a Bible study, he, he was like, oh, I can't, you guys are awesome and you're inspiring, but I can't do any of the stuff that you're saying. He's done it all. He's done it all. The growth is evident. The growth is evident. Right? Now, if you assess your actions and truth and realize that you aren't doing your best, then it's probably not the accuser. It's not the devil. It's probably the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin and you should repent. It's not about your words and tongue. If you actually examine your actions and realize, oh, I'm totally not giving my best, then I don't think Satan is even on your radar. He doesn't pay attention to disciples that aren't giving their best. He doesn't have to worry about them. You're your own issue. It's the Holy Spirit that is convicting you and saying, yeah, you are not growing. The Holy Spirit is truth. And so you've got to go to the truth and say, am I do I have any actions? Right. How do you know if you've grown? How do you know if you've grown? What are the actions? What are the truth? You guys ready? Yeah. The same situations elicit a different response. Mm. That shows you've grown. That you're dealing with the same situation, but you're responding to it in a different way. Let's go. Something that previously made you freak out now you are dealing it with hope. Wow. Right? I've got to lift up Trey's wife. She's not with us. She's looking after our son. Amelia has grown like crazy. She's grown like crazy. We, we, had, we had discipling time yesterday with Trey and Amelia. It was awesome. And, and I was just I had to lift up Bia because there were some things when we first moved here that when situations happened, Bia was like, what? <laughs> this, is, this is challenging. But now she's, she's facing it head on. And she's not the one afraid to pick up the phone. She's the one doing the phone call. That's growth. That's awesome. The same situation eliciting a different response. How else can you know if you've grown? You're able to guide someone through the same issue because you've successfully come out the other side. That's how you know you've grown, right? My wife is laughing because last week in our discipling time with Michael and Michelle, we got discipled on a specific issue that the exact same issue came up with Trey and Amelia yesterday. And as Trey and Amelia were sharing, me and Frankie were just laughing. Just, guy, why are you laughing at us? This is serious. And we were like, we, we were discipled on the exact same thing last week. But you know what was inspiring is that it only took a few days for Frankie and I to grow through this problem. And so we were able to help Trey and Amelia with it straight away. That's awesome. We grew through the issue that we were having in our marriage, and then we were able to help train Amelia with the issue that they were having in their marriage. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Right? How else do you know that you've grown? You respond to someone else's hardship with hope. 
Romans chapter 5 verse 4 says that perseverance, suffering, sorry, produces perseverance, produces character, produces hope. And so you're able to see someone else's difficulty and hardship and respond with joy. You ever done that? When you come up to your mentor or church leader or whatever, telling them something that you think is the end of the world and they just smile at you? Or laugh or laugh at you? Or just, or just give you a hug and say, no, it's all good, bro. To you, it feels like the world is ending. Why, why are they smiling? Hope. They've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And so they're like, it's going to be okay. Because they've been through that exact same experience. That's how you know you've grown. And so if you've been able to do some of those things that, this week, if you're experiencing things but eliciting a different response. Now, if you're experiencing things and the same response keeps happening, the same situation keeps producing the same sinful response in you, you're not growing in that area. If you hear about someone else having that issue and you're not able to guide them because you haven't successfully come out the other side. You haven't grown in that area. When you hear someone else's hardship and it makes you have a hardship, you haven't grown in that area. When someone tells you their problems and it makes you go, and it crushes you, you you haven't grown in that specific area. We shouldn't get taken out by someone else's emotions. You shouldn't get a bad attitude at a bad attitude. That means we haven't grown because there's no hope. Look at verse 21. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. Now, the Bible doesn't say that your heart won't condemn you. It's always going to do that. The heart is deceitful and beyond cure. The only way that your heart won't condemn you is if you are going by the actions and the truth. Confidence comes from God's love, and it comes from our actions and our truth. This allows us to pray with confidence, to approach the throne of grace with confidence. How confident do you feel asking for a raise when you know you've been a lousy worker? When you know you come to work late all the time, or maybe not asking for a raise, asking for a holiday, extra holiday, but you know you're always late, you know you never smile at work, and you come in and you're about to ask your boss for a holiday. How confident do you feel? Not confident. No, and if you feel confident, that's not confidence, that's arrogance. <laughs> you are totally out of touch with where you are at. You're a lousy worker, you don't deserve any days off. Or remember when you were a kid? And you spent the whole week being really well behaved because you were gearing up to ask for something from your parents. You remember that? That's the same thing with God. We have confidence to come to our relationship with God. Say, no, God, I'm doing my best. Doesn't mean we're perfect. But if you know my actions and truth, I have done my absolute best this week. I can come to God with confidence. You ever ask God, God, help me to baptize someone. But you're not sharing your faith. And so it's the most unconfident, faithless prayer that you've ever prayed. Yeah, God, I just want to be fruitful. But you know the Holy Spirit said, yeah, but you don't share your faith. And so you're, yeah, yeah, God, I just want to be fruitful. And yeah, it's just not confident at all. Because there's no faith behind it. There's no actions. There's no truth. You know you're not giving your best shot. The word confidence in the Greek is paresia, which means to be free and fearless. Does that describe your prayer life? (coughs) Free and fearless. That I could ask God for anything. The worst he can say is no. But why not ask anyway? I'm free and fearless because I know I'm walking in the truth and I've got the actions. The Greek word could also mean without circumlocution. You guys know what circumlocution is? Well, the word circumference is, is the circle, right? So circumlocution means your talk is, is like this. Some of us talk to people like that because we pray like that. Sometimes we're having conversations with you and I, I, just, I don't know what you're saying. Sorry, you go like this. But it's because you're talking to God like that too. Because there's no confidence before God. Because you're not sure of the actions and truth. Your heart's condemning you. And you're not 
secure in your actions and truth. And so you go around and around. You circumlocute with the Lord. And so that's what we do with everyone else. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that many words do not cover up sin. And so if we're full of circumlocution, we're not full of confidence. We're not full of confidence. Point number three. Let's get there. Second Chronicles 16. You guys still with me? Yes. You want to grow? Yes. Amen. That's good. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Point number three. Total commitment is the best fertilizer. Total commitment is the best fertilizer. Second Chronicles 16 is a fantastic scripture. And this will be a very short point. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. The Bible says if you are fully, totally committed to God, He will strengthen you. Strength, he will strengthen you. doesn't matter where you are at. If you are totally committed to God, you will get stronger. So it's never a skill issue. It's never an intellectual issue. It's a commitment issue. If you are not getting stronger, if you're not growing as a disciple, it is a commitment issue. Do you come to all the meetings of the body? Do you come to all the meetings of the body? That is a commitment issue. Do you give every Sunday and for benevolence every Wednesday? That is a commitment issue. When was the last time you were in a Bible study set up by someone else, eager to take the notes? That is a commitment issue. When was the last time you were up the front here taking someone's good confession? That is a commitment issue. Are you more or less committed than when you got baptized? Ask yourself the question. Are you more or less committed than when you got baptized? Because we were all feeling mighty committed that day. Jesus is Lord. You remember how you said Jesus is Lord? What is your good? Jesus. Oh, you know, some of us said it. Real. We whipped it out of our mouth. Jesus is Lord. Are you that committed today? Think of all the disciples that got lifted up. All the people that have grown. What do they have in common? They're committed. They're committed. Casper gave up Division One basketball on Friday so we could come to a Campus Devo that's not even that awesome yet. Wow. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Campus, I mean, it's awesome for disciples, but if I was a guest, I'd be like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> These guys make noise. What kind of, it needs to be better. What I'm saying, it needs to grow. Amen? Amen. But Casper said, you know what? This is, this is more important than basketball. This is more important. That's commitment. Could you ever have imagined you sharing your faith at high school? No. That's commitment. And he's growing. Are Sean and Anna committed? Yes. Is Mariana committed? Yes. Neche and Marina, are they committed? Yes. Is Philo committed? Yes. And so we wonder why everyone is growing. It's commitment. For those trying to be fruitful, stop focus on being fruitful. Focus on growing. Stop focusing on being fruitful. Focus on growing. I think there's a couple points I just want to point out on where the church needs to grow. We need some spiritual aunties and uncles. We need some spiritual aunties and uncles. Instead of being jealous of the baby disciples who are outgrowing you, help them and be a catalyst for their growth, not a stumbling block. I think we've got some mature disciples who need to realize that their role is not to be the one that's getting lifted up every weekend. The Bible says the presentable parts need no special treatment. And so you're a presentable part. You've been around for a while. You should be helping those underneath you, not pulling them down. I want to call the church to be totally committed to the European world sector. Totally committed to the European world sector. Are you going to the EMC? The European Missions Conference. We don't, if, when you've placed membership, I want to lift up Victor. I want to lift up Victor. When, when you place membership in a church, you belong to that church. You are becoming a European disciple. I want to lift up Victor. The minute he came, he's like, oh, I'm not this Lagos boy no more. I'm in Europe, so I'm going to sing. I'm going to get discipled. I'm going to wear a suit. I'm going to go after it. All this different kind of stuff. 
I want to lift you up, bro. Your example is awesome. He's trying to get in. He's, he's learning because it's, it's different. Of course, all of our churches around the world, we have the same convictions, but we do different flavors. He's like, no, I need to know the European flavor because I'm a disciple in the European world sector. <laughs> have you booked your hotel? For those that are going to the EMC, you can, you can book it now and pay for it after. That's awesome. Guests, why not come to the EMC? We're going to Barcelona for a week. You're probably going to go to Lanzarote and, and, and get drunk and stuff anyway. So why not come to Barcelona and actually worship Jesus for a week? We're going at the end of October. You're going to have the best time of your entire life. But to those not going, are you totally committed to the European world sector? We can't go for different reasons. We have teenagers that can't go. That's okay. We have visa issues that can't go. That's okay. But what are you doing to make the EMC awesome from here? That's not an excuse for, for a lack of commitment. Have you decided to pay for someone else to get there that's total commitment i can't go to the emc but i'll get someone else there you trying to get a guest i did that plenty of times i paid for other people to get to the emc and went myself obviously because i'm european and go but i'm always paid for people to get there i'm 100 percent do you have a guest at the emc for those that aren't going how are you showing your total commitment have you shared all the content online? Are you trying to pull other people in to, to, to get it going, to make God glorified at this EMC? Are we totally committed? Colossians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. And so for those that not come into the EMC, I want you to give us FOMO. Make us jealous we didn't stay in Dublin. Make something so fire. Be totally committed. Make, don't have FOMO, oh, I'm fear of missing out. The faithless only miss out. That's what FOMO stands for. Faithless only misses out. The only, the only piece person that misses out in the church is the faithless people. Wow. I, don't, I don't want those that can't get visas to be faithless and be sitting, oh, everyone's in Barcelona. No, do something awesome here. Yeah. Make it incredible. <laughs> totally committed to keeping the funnel full. We need to be, you guys got to understand this principle as disciples, that it doesn't matter if you've got a bunch of hot studies, you baptize three people on Sunday, but then it takes three months to get anybody else baptized. You've got to keep the funnel full. You've got to consistently be getting new people to come and get to know God, setting up new Bible studies. Did you set up a new Bible study this week? Did you have a new person that you're wanting to introduce? We should see new faces every single week. Should be going after getting best guests to Bible talk, guests to campus devotional, guests on Sunday. Everyone, the guests should be getting guests. If you're inspired by what you're seeing in this church, you need to be totally committed. Make the decision to become a disciple. Make the decision to give on Sundays. Come and ask us. Look at our bank account. See where the money's going. We're completely transparent. I am not where I'm. My trousers are from Duns. My suit belongs to Ola in London. My tie belongs to Trey. My shirt belongs to Trey. My shoes belong to Trey. Um, my socks are from Duns. My wife bought me this ring. My watch belongs to Trey. <laughs> About the only thing that I own on my body right now is my glasses. That's it. Be totally committed. Go all in. Guess I'm speaking to you. Go all in. Why not? Why not give to the church? If you can't go to the EMC, pay for someone else to go. Wow. We need to be a growing church. Wow. A going church for a coming Christ. Wow. God can use you. I want to challenge you. Be fruitful by the end of this month. We've been here for almost a year now. Yeah. Three weeks left until our first anniversary as a church. Wow. What are you going to do with those three weeks? <laughs> what are you going to do with those three weeks? What are you going to do with those three weeks? Let it not pass us by. Let's evangelize all of Ireland. I love you and to God be the glory.